Hold up, y'all. Hold up, y'all. I'm about to switch them out. All right, y'all, baby, I'm coming, I'm coming to y'all as y'all homegirl, okay? Because, period, I ain't got nothing to do with this shit, so I'm just doing what I've been guided to do, okay, y'all? All right, y'all, so what's up? It's your girl who has the right from traveling, period, period, okay? Okay, okay. Um, yo, so, yo, I'm coming here with the tea. Look, I've been staying the fuck up out of this whole Kevin Samuel shit because it ain't got shit to do with me, okay, period. I have nothing to do with what happened to Kevin Samuels. I really don't even care about what's going on with Kevin Samuels, to be honest. Like, I ain't ever spoke to this man. I know there's people that speak of his rhetoric that were like, ah, 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 with women, and but these particular individuals, like, they're, like, they can't touch me. Like, I mean, they probably could try, but they can't touch me. And, like, honestly, like, I know he wasn't on my frequency because I never saw his stuff. Like, I had to go out of my way to find his channel. I had never known who he was up until right before he died. I did not know Kevin Samuels even existed. Like, I think I saw his name a few times places, but I never clicked on it. Like, and that's, and I'm, that is the honest to creation truth. I had no, I, I never in my life, still to the day, have never seen a video on Kevin Samuels' actual page. I've never seen him on World Star. I've never seen him on The Shade Room. I literally had a bubble of protection around me where I just never saw him. The only time I heard of him is if somebody else I followed spoke of him, but I was never on any stages or in any live streams. Besides one where his name was mentioned. The only live stream I ever was on that somebody mentioned his name and tried to like refer to me in some type of way regarding something this guy said was when I was on the search for Dynasty's page. Like the search for you who, I don't know if I'm saying that right, doesn't matter. Point of the matter is, never had heard about this man before in my life. Never. Okay, cool. So... I'm going to pull these cards. Now, before I do this, I want to give a disclaimer. I need the ancestors to protect me. But I'm just saying this, you know, create a seal of protection around me. Like I have been with this, mon this man. This mom. This mom. Um, yeah. Apparently, his ancestors is pretty um together because they're not playing with his ass. Okay, cool. So, the title of this is... Kevin Samuels versus Linda Carroll Brown. All right, so most of y'all know who Kevin Samuels is. I don't know enough about Kevin Samuels to speak about him. All I know is he was an image, image consultant, and he said some very controversial things about black women and women in general, and a lot of people really hated him because of that, and I don't really know enough about him to speak on him because I don't really care. I don't care. Like I, It's okay for me to say this. I don't care. I don't care about nothing he had to say. I had never felt like anything he had to say would resonate with me. And since I did never feel that way about myself, I never saw any of his shit. Never saw any of his stuff. Never saw it. Now, we'll tell you this. The day he died, it felt very monumental to me because I had just made videos about slave trader energy being used. And those who were exploiting their energy, we would know. Kevin Samuels had a slave trader entity in his body, in his body. And I watched his interview from Vlad. Um, and at 1418, 14 minutes and 18 seconds, his whole eye area turns black. You can see it on the video. That man, whenever he went through World Star, whatever happened, where the World Star reached out to him and offered him some money for him to continue to talk and bash black women. Whatever the man did, to, so he went from 40K subscribers to a million subscribers, that man sold his soul to somebody and something, okay? And the ancestors did not like it. Now, according to what Dinah said, Dinah said that some women on the internet have been saying that they use their crystals and their orishas and they did hoodoo to take him out and blah, 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 blah. I don't care how many people possibly put this man in a jar or put him at the graveyard. I'm going to tell y'all who exactly who took his ass out. And she wants me to tell y'all she took his ass out. Linda Carroll Brown came forward and said, I did it. 
Now talk about who I am. And if they want to know why I did it, then they can come ask me themselves and ain't nobody going to do shit about it. I did it. His mama can't do nothing. His grandmama can't do nothing. His auntie can't do nothing. His daddy can't do nothing. Can't nobody do shit about it. I did it. Exactly what she said. I just said it exactly how she said it. Okay. Now, Linda Carroll Brown was, was, <laughs> tell y'all about it. I didn't even know this ancestor. I mean, I knew about her because I learned about her in school, but I didn't know who she was until today, like in terms of her being about that shit. Okay. Apparently, Linda Carroll Brown owns a lot of weight in the spiritual room, and this is exactly why. Linda Carroll Brown became famous. This was before all this Instagram stuff. She is a true star out here, okay? She was born, she's been a star since she was a kid. And I ain't talking about I ain't here being an entertainer. She's been a civil rights activist <coughs> star since she was little. Linda Carroll Brown is the one, the girl who made Brown vs. Board of Education happen, which desegregated the schools and canceled out Plessy vs. Ferguson, which was basically one of the biggest laws that used the 14th Amendment to justify segregation in America. Attempting to fool us that white, white spaces were the equal to black spaces during segregation, which we all know. Plessy versus Ferguson was actually a case in, a, in, a, in regards to the crossroads, which is ruled by Legba, Papa Legba, Legba and Shu. But I'm going to be, be more specific. The particular crossroads in which this particular... Um, this particular case was in regards to is a crossroads that rappers in the entertainment industry that have taken over of the, the, the news station in which Kevin Samuels went viral on. He introduced himself to this energy. They literally sacrificed my friend. His name was Young Lodi, Lil Lodi in New Orleans. I have him on Trapland. This is one of my partners. They left his body at the railroad tracks in New Orleans. They've been leaving mad sacrifices at these crossroads. And I'm not going to say their name on here. And I got this energy off of Vlad's shit. Vlad has done interviews for a lot of people. So Kevin Samuels, he opened the door for this entity regarding slavery. He made a deal and a pact with this spirit in these entities. I don't know what all the contracts was. I don't know if he knows about the shit. I don't, I don't know. And she said, it's not for me to know because it don't matter now. Those that need to know will know the truth. She said a lot of people were using him to cover up their shit. And she said, that's why she did what she did. She said it was them or us. She chose us. She said, you will notice that a lot of rappers and people that have been using the same slave trader energy are now being put in jail or on trial or are, are being exposed for the assassination of hundreds of people. Outcries and outroars have burst out because Kevin Samuels was one of many vessels that was holding this energy. But once he died, that energy died with him. He took that. He basically, Kevin Samuels was like, since you want to take me out, I'm taking you with me. Whatever he made a pact with, he killed that spirit when he passed away. So he did do something for black women in that regard. I will say this. When he died, I felt that spirit. Whatever that was attached to him, I felt that spirit die. And at first, I was trying to figure out if it was Kevin Samuels himself. Linda Carroll Brown stating is that it was not him. And she said he did not know what he was getting himself into when he made whatever spiritual pact he made with this particular entity.
And they, she stated that he went along with it because of the fame that it promised him and the wealth it brought him. So in that regard, it was consensual. Okay? All right. Now, this is what's so wild, y'all. So I used the timestamp from Vlad TV's um Vlad TV's interview. I took the one off of it. I put in 418 and then Linda Carol Brown and Ancestors came through. Linda Carol Brown didn't come through. And Shu came through and said, put in 1896. I looked up 418, 1896. Plessy versus Ferguson came up immediately. And it's not even the exact same date. Plessy vs. Ferguson started on 4-13-1896 and continued till May 18th, 1896. It is May 11th, 2022, as I'm making this video, which will be the anniversary of um, Plessy vs. Ferguson in a few days. Around the time when that, that super total eclipse is going to happen. Okay, we have a total lunar eclipse coming through, and it's a this whole situation with Kevin Samuels was a time capsule from a, a, a total lunar eclipse that will be ha happening in 2152. I won't be alive in 2152. Okay, I most likely, I mean, I might, I ain't there. I don't think I'm, my, maybe my child will make a video in 2152, or my grandchild or somebody like that will make a, a child a, a video. Somebody in my family is going to make something pop off to remind y'all about this video when they have this total lunar eclipse 2152. I'm speaking it into existence. Okay, poop. All right. But yeah, so the super moon eclipse is coming up on May 15th through the 16th, 2022. It will be in this eclipse shadow period when the Plessy versus Ferguson um 163 US 537 law or court case from the Supreme Court will be in a shadow period on the 18th of May coming this month. The 14th amendment regarding segregation was overruled by Brown versus Education in 1954. Okay? Now let's see how old she was, y'all. Let's see how old she was when she did this case. All right, so 1954 minus 1943. She was 11 years old during this case. Bro, listen, that shit is so inspiring. She was like a lawyer at 11 years old. I can just only imagine my 11-year-old self. That's some shit I would have did. For real. Go against the whole court system and change the whole law regarding the education board. At 11 years old, heck, you don't sound like some stuff I would do. I'm not saying I did it, but I'm just saying. I, I understand why this ancestor has been around me and I, I wasn't aware of until now. But, yeah, so she said she did it, okay? And, like I said, like, she is an ancestor that all, almost all black people know about because we learned about, all, really, all Americans learn about her. We all are taught, I don't know if they still teach this now, but when I was in school, they taught about the Board of Education, Brown versus the Board of Education. That's one of the main things about black history that we did learn. And we learned it when it wasn't black history. Okay? So, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull some cards. You know what I'm saying? So we can get some understanding about this whole situation. And whoever is out here saying, you know, taking taking it lightly that they out here murdering people using magic and shit, and it's not justified. Um, somebody's saying something indirectly to you on social media. Um, it's not right to kill somebody. I just want to say that. I've never done anything like that. I'm not judging, but first house is dealing with oneself. Right. I've never done anything like that. And, um... When you really work with this spiritual stuff and you really are initiated into certain things and you really know who to for real and you are taught by people with, 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 with real true power and not like some BS um, and unethical practices and stuff, we are not taught to use our power in ways that are like, we are not taught to abuse our power. And another reason why I believe this came up is because, like I said, my, one of my ancestors, who was my friend, who was um, assassinated and sacrificed at the crossroads in Louisiana, he told me he protects those crossroads. They apparently, whatever Kevin Samuels had going on, apparently somebody was doing work on his behalf 
on those crossroads and or somebody left something regarding his assassination at those crossroads in New Orleans and it's definitely gotten picked up by my ancestors and my ancestors brought it in like I said Linda Kara Brown was like you know I did it and she's not saying she did it as in like she orchestrated people doing shit to seek him harm but as far as like his transition She said she definitely had a hand in that. Okay. Now, she don't want me talking too much about it. She just stated that she came forward as an ancestor that was responsible for his transition. All right. Now, in regards to people that like you know, go through the muddy details of people that did malicious things towards him prior to his murder. I mean, not his murder. Um, prior to his um transition, like I said. Stuff was left at the Louisiana Crossroads regarding him. Uh, my best friend, not my best friend. I mean, I guess people call him my best friend. But we, we didn't really know each other that well when he was live. Now, his ancestors, me and him, are like this. But um, he was a NOLA bounce artist. And he protects those crossroads. And he's one of, not if, one of the, he is one of the leading ancestors over my ancestral lineage of Eshu. And... He came up through my reading that I had with my godparents. Didn't know they was my godparents at the time. And when I first ever inquired about if Eshu walked with me for real, because I had got tired of people in Atlanta, you know, trying to murder me to take Eshu and to make me into an Eshu. And just, it was weird stuff that people in Ifa and Atlanta was trying to do to me um, before I was aware of what my power was. And so my particular godparents, um, they confirmed that I have an ancestral connection to Eshu. And so it's just disheartening to me for people to, like, like I said, Kevin Samuels physically died, you know what I'm saying? But he was already gone. Like he did that interview with Vlad 10 months ago. And I'm going to tell you the exact day when he did this interview with Vlad and I'm, people that are grieving him, his soul was already gone when he did this interview. He did an interview with Vlad on June 26, 2021. Kevin Samuels, the true essence of his element of his soul was already deceased in 2021 and June 26. So everything that has been being made since that time for has been puppetry arts. His vessel was being animated by something else. Um, a lot of times, and I and I felt that when he passed away, his heart space was so heavy and painful. There was nothing of human essence left in it. Whatever that was that was animating his vessel literally ate his his heart alive. It's very graphic. Um, I don't even want to feel that energy, but I felt it when he passed. So his life after he unknowingly sold his soul into whatever it was that he decided to do to create the fame that he was seeking he was definitely or it could have been just an attachment from his his attention seeking um he did say in the interview that he was an only child this is all alleged from what i'm seeing in the spirit again i don't know this man i don't i've never seen any of his videos and i have no intentions of opening that portal to watch any of his stuff because i know for a fact now that there's a lot of spiritual people that have left sacrifices in in, in, in malicious entities on that platform and i don't want no parts of it my ancestors kept me away from it for a reason okay um now I'm going to be, I'm being told to show y'all in a boundary way. So it can't attach itself to anybody else. This is why she has me telling y'all this. Um, what this entity is doing as far as like, you know, what astrological energy that this entity has. Oh, one at a time. That's all this stuff coming out. Like moons coming out. Oh my gosh. Hold on, let me light some sage, because this thing is a lot. Like, just me pulling that one card regarding the situation. Got a lot of energy going on, yo. Making my nose itch. Oh, my gosh. Folks have some booger sugar stuff going on. It ain't my business. Did I do that? It ain't my fault. Did I do that? It ain't my fault. 
Did I do that? Oh, shoot. All right, y'all. Yeah, there's been a lot of, and that's, that's another thing. A lot of tarot readers been doing readings on him and didn't, wasn't aware of what kind of spirits. They, like, they literally put marks, they marked themselves with this entity that was on him. Like, it's just wild. People, people fell straight into the trap of what they wanted them to do. Okay. And I'm just glad that I'm doing this in a way with an ancestor that's setting a boundary for me because they want me to, you know, really trying to set a boundary for everybody in a sense from this energy because this is a really dark thing that they these people did and there's a particular youtuber that said that he was a uh, friends with him and i honestly felt it in that moment i said y'all feel like this man sacrificed his friends so his youtube channel will come back up literally because his youtube channel got taken down right around the time kevin samuels died and right after kevin samuels died and all those people talking about him he got his youtube channel back So y'all literally got to watch what a human sacrifice looked like with this Ken Samuel situation. And y'all, it's without a shadow of a doubt that it was a human sacrifice. Without a shadow of a doubt that it was a human sacrifice. All right. So we would like clarification. One card regarding this Kevin Samuel situation. Kevin, Kevin Samuel's situation on an astrological level what this would look like without any harm to us. Juno came out in the reverse. Juno rules over marriages and partnerships. All right, so he talks about him having two marriages. Um, I'm not sure who his second wife is. The second wife is coming up. Allegedly, she has something to do with this. I don't know what happened. Um... She wanted a child with him, and he wouldn't give it to her. She's very angry. And she's been very angry since they broke up. I ain't going to speak no more about it. That's all she wanted me to say. It's a lot of pressure in my heart chakra area when I spoke about this woman who was angry with him that he was once married to. And she had a very, like, her ancestors are very, um powerful in the spiritual realm but not necessarily in a good way they definitely practice um somebody practiced some type of um dark magic in her bloodline whether it been her or it was an ancestor that she had previous that she was channeling with um i don't know his um, ex-wife but i will say that all right i'm gonna keep pulling some more of these cards i'm gonna do one more they don't she does not want me to do a whole lot regarding this situation um, but just out of protecting myself because I don't have time. All right, the lunar eclipse. I was just talking about that eclipse. I was just talking about that eclipse, total lunar eclipse. That's a confirmation that clip closes it out right there. All right. All right, so I said the first house came out. Juno came out. Lunar eclipse came out. Okay. Now, like I said, we got a lunar eclipse coming up on the 15th of this month, of this month May 15th, 2022. There will be a lunar eclipse. If I'm not mistaken, it's a lunar eclipse. Let me see. May 15th, eclipse. Yep, it's to, it's gonna be on Sunday. This is the completion of the cycle. This ritual will be completed. It will, it's not. It's not. She said it's not gonna be completed the way they wanted it to because I'm making this reading happen. So it's gonna set a boundary. So it's not gonna do what they wanted. But this this guy dying it was supposed to be some real dark stuff to be in completion by this lunar. And they was going to use the power of this lunar eclipse because lunar eclipse, it cycles back around. So they were basically going to attach his soul to this eclipse. Like they've done a lot of other celebrities that have passed away. Said Juno partnerships. Um, and then the first house. So I'm going to talk about the first house. So give me a second.
All right, it says, in astrology, the first house is known as a sign of the self. It con connotes who somebody is and their identity. This implies that the body, the psyche, and the behaviors are to be, to a great extent, impacted by this house. In any planet or astrological point that is situated inside it, everything that is related to appearance falls under the ruling ship of this house. The parts of the chart near the ascendant are in charge of the physical self, while parts of it is close to the second house. Speak more about the behaviors as well as the style, appearance, and everything visible about that person. This this house is ruled by Mars. The zodiac sign is Aries. Self identity, consciousness, ego. We all know from just general word of ear and mouth, and even from just a slight of me seeing that man. That man had a huge ego. Our focus and appearance, and he was very about his appearance. The question of identity is answered by everything that the first house incorporates into it, both at the moment of birth and during the person's life when the planets continue transiting in their orbits. It explains a range, range, a wide range of perspectives that the person has about the world. The first house explains how the individual depicts themselves toward their general surroundings. Their essence and presence, this includes the full expression of who someone is and how he or she is seen from their environment. The first house rules the conscious self. All right, I'm not going to talk no more about it. She wants me to talk about who the slave trader is that was riding his, like, riding his, his aura and in his energy, and that energy is being weaponized. I think it's Jonathan. I know the first name of the guy is Jonathan. I got to make sure I get the, right, the last name right. All right, so I'm going to speak about the person that's living that's related to this guy first because this literally corresponds to what I already said, okay? Um, so the, uh, fuck, which one was this one? Oh, 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 Brown versus Board of Education started from December 9th, 1952, which December 9th is actually the anniversary of a massacre of free slaves that were promised 40 acres and a mule. They murdered them right outside of Savannah and left their bodies in the river. Talked about this on Trapland. And that's also the anniversary of a Trapland ancestor who was assassinated. And they attempted to murder me on that day. So this day is already highly charged. There is a man known as Johannes, J-O-H-A-N-N-E-S, Hildebrad D. Wolf. He is related to the slave traders, the D. Wolf family. Um, he was born on December 10th, 1962. According to Wikipedia, this man is still alive. He is a Dutch former professional football player who played as a defender. He earned six cups for the Dutch national team, scoring two goals. This man's eyes look so weird. It's insane to me. He is. Um, he was born in the Netherlands. He's 6'2". Um, it doesn't say what he's doing now, but he's, apparently he's a football player, like a soccer player. Or was a soccer player. It says he's still a soccer player. But apparently this man is, is related to the Blue Wolf family. And he's a living legacy carrier. So allegedly the soul parts, if this ritual was completed, was going to go to this man. And probably was going to do something for his career or his family's career. But it's not going to anymore because of me doing this reading. Um, his ancestor is known as John D. Wolf. Slay, so, hold on, I got to prove it. I literally was just talking about these people. I was just talking about these people. I was just talking about these people. Another reason why I could really see what they be doing is because he died on my birthday. 
dude died on my birthday. No, I'm not capping. Like, okay, so James D. Wolf, he was born on March 18, 1764, and he died on December 21st, 1837. I was born on December 21st, okay? He was a slave trader, a privateer during the War of 1812, and a state and national politician. He served as a state legislator for a total of not nearly 25 years, and in the 1820s as a United States senator from Rhode Island for much of a term. He was a slave trader in Rhode Island. And his ancestors, his living descendants, have done a documentary viewing in Louisiana, in New Orleans. All right. He invested in sugar and coffee plantations in Cuba and became the wealthiest man in his state. There are a lot of dispensaries, not dispensaries, well, shit, possibly dispensaries too. But there, ooh, there's a dispensary that a lot of the rappers are associated with that's been using this energy, which is attached to um, hot, um, hot new hip hop. Um, what's that other the platform called that he was went viral on? Um, World Star Hip Hop. All of them are kind of like tied, tied into the same energy. Um, James D. Wolf, his um, like I said, he has living descendants. They have a documentary about slave traders. I felt his energy, a slave trader energy about um one particular chain of the Botanicas in Las Vegas. So there's a lot, there are some people in Santeria and Lukumi who are influencers, who have influencers that are using, that they are puppeteering on social media that are a part of their Ile. I don't know if it's called Ile in Santeria, Lukumi. It's not Lukumi, but they said it's Santeria. These particular Santeria priests, I'm seeing one that's in Los Angeles. I've seen his face before. I'm not going to call out who his child is. Just know y'all going to find out because some shit going to happen. All right, Linda, like I said, Linda Kara Brown, the ancestors bringing all this out. They was trying to cover up some other shit they got going on. Those particular people, I've already said, I've seen them being associated with human trafficking. And I've also been seeing that particular influencer going to give um, ancestor offerings to um, ancestors that are resided in Oakland Cemetery in Atlanta, Georgia, where the KKK founder and leader resides. And around the time Kevin Samuels died, the KKK had started making their appearances known in atlanta and his death if i hadn't done this reading and certain people were notified about it they were going to use kevin samuel's um energy to fuel the rebirth of the kkk i'm done i ain't talking no more that's it Woo, child i don't want no parts of this i don't fuck around with them kkk motherfuckers man y'all motherfucker that ain't from georgia boy y'all play around in the cemetery i want to be powerful don't know Nothing about them KKK, but them KKK spirits, but them is some entities. <laughs> like they deal with some entities. I mean, even some people, boy, I'm telling you, but they, they do not like me, okay? I ain't scared of them, but they do not like me, okay? They've been trying to kill my people, my, my, like my real blood family. They've been trying to kill us for a long time. I've had them roll up on me just to go pay my respects to Dark Mark Luther King, and I'm trying to follow me. And I'm like, if you come to the car, I got the stick for you, dog. I know what you look like because I see you comb. Matter of fact, it's wild. Around this time, right before Kevin Samuels died, I saw a KKK member in a grocery store in Las Vegas. And he tried to trap me on the aisle. I saw him. I can see their, their hats. I can see that in their aura when I see them in public. And they know I can see them. They know I can see them. But I saw him, but I ain't paying him no mind. I was like, you gonna fuck with me? I ain't gonna fuck with you. What the fuck? I'm gonna, I'm gonna come beat you up in the motherfucking store because you a KKK member? No. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna move the fuck around. I don't got time for you, mo, dog, because I know what kind of shit y'all be on, what kind of time y'all be on, okay? And I was curious if the KKK was out in Vegas doing anything because I got a, a teacher who's been using their energy to try to seek me harm. And one of his students tried to um, roll, he tried to um, run me over his car in New Orleans. The KKK deep as fuck in New Orleans. So whoever this person is that Dinus is calling out, and I'm gonna put his video on here. Or I'm gonna send him this video. I don't know. I don't give a fuck. I, I'm really slick mad at Dinus right now. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm really mad at him because like he don't say some stuff, but I'm not gonna throw that into this whole situation because he did make his video and I was guided by his ancestors to make this video because he made his video. So I'm not gonna be hard headed and I'm gonna send him the fucking video. All right, so anyways, but yeah. This shit gonna come out, like I said, these KKK members was planning on using this. I'm not 100% sure if the free the Freemasons and KKKs are 100% involved. I'm sure they probably are, but they definitely love to try to, like, manipulate and oppress and suppress 
these civil rights activists ancestors that want us you know us to do well and to try to get over these milestones as a collective of people and so they was definitely using him as a puppet and all the people that was following him they was using him as puppets too to reverse what linda coral brown accomplished during the brown verse board of education by um defeminizing the black woman and by um projecting this this um image which has already been done by ifa as is of how less the black woman is to society and how we have nothing to contribute okay all right y'all i'm done talking about this i'm burning my stage because i don't got time for y'all motherfuckers with all this bullshit y'all been doing bro like this shit don't make no damn sense like y'all really be real calculated on how y'all gonna do if y'all put as much energy into actually healing y'all bloodlines as y'all do to be coming up with all this janky ass shit y'all be doing in the spiritual realm to try to get these these get rich quick schemes y'all got going on with the spiritual shit y'all been doing that shit's stupid bro so just know, bro. I just let y'all motherfuckers know this shit's stupid. If you put as much energy into that as y'all do with these soul sucking soul contracts y'all be having with these media outlets that are not ran by black folks that are invested in your in your survival and yo, you know what I'm saying, your healing, y'all will be we will all as a collective be in a better place, bro. Like this shit just don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. Like it's just it's wild to me, bro. Like this shit doesn't make no fucking sense. But listen, I learned a long time ago that I ain't here to save everybody. Okay? I'm here to get my message out about those that it, it is needed to get the message. And I'm here to protect myself, first and foremost. And my people that fuck with me. And you know what I'm saying? And that's it. And everybody else, if y'all get some of that tea, you know what I'm saying? What's left over after I do that? Then by all means, and you know, you get some of the tea. But outside of that, bro, you really, it don't even really matter to me for real. Okay. All right. So I'm done with my reading. That was real short, sweet, and to the point. Okay. I thought this was going to be a long reading. I got more cleansing to do. Um, I want to do that on camera before I get off of here because I'm letting that energy stay within this time capsule and separating it from me. All right, y'all. Um, I appreciate you watching my video. Like, share, and subscribe. This is my take on the whole Kevin Seven situation. And y'all be safe out here in these spiritual streets. And be careful what y'all be saying about people, man. Because you don't know whose ancestors you're going to make mad. Peace.